What's up everyone? I'm here at Artis Headquarters with one of my students, Rafael Silveira. Uh, we're going to learn today on how to prevent the opponent from getting on side control, but also um, how to find a space and create a space to escape from side control. So many people are asking uh, on how to deal with side control and I have some tips that I believe it will, I don't believe but I'm pretty sure very sure that uh, will help you a lot on your guard recovery, not, in, not allow your opponent to uh, control you and then like you feel stuck underneath of your opponent, okay? So first you have to understand uh, what my opponent wants, okay, before I start passing my guard, okay? There's like one thing that I always tell to my students and I'm, I'm pretty sure this class right here will solve a lot of problems. Um, for you, okay? This is so let's say when I'm playing guard, first thing I have to do is to prevent my opponent from getting on side control, okay? So for example, if the guard is open here, I have like so many ways for me to control my opponent. And if you notice, you're always looking for the distance, okay? So every single guard you play, uh, for example, if I got the spider guard, right? I'm controlling his hands, right? And I have to keep the hands of my opponent away from my collars, okay? And, I, and you guys understand why. So you cannot, the first thing you have to protect uh, yourself, first, not allow your opponent to control your, your collars, okay? So first, you pull your opponent, but at the same time, if your opponent trying to get your collar, you avoid that, okay? Don't let that happen, okay? But then you can start playing like spider guard, like lasso, right? You can bring your knees towards your chest to keep also uh, the distance of your opponent, uh, not letting your opponent like going too far away from you, but also too close, right? You have to keep him in the neutral position here, like right between. If I extend too much my legs, you can start moving around if that's my guard, right? I have to keep close, but I, at the same time that I keep him close, I cannot let him just grab my collars like this. For example, right here, I'm always grabbing my collar. I have to break that grip right away and keep it easy and closed, right? I can go for deep lasso, for example, right here on this side. I'm not extending this leg too much, right? Bring my knees towards my chest. And now look, this works because he's not controlling my collars or even close to grab my head. Things that you need to do when you're playing guard is not letting your opponent control your collar or grab your head, okay? So that's why we're playing like this, okay? So for example, if I'm doing like a two-on-one uh, guard, right, I can do like this, look, try to grab my collars, he can't, try to hug my head, he can't, right? He can move around, try to move around, but I can play like always escaping the hips like this, right off in one side, I can grab the other side of, of the pants right here on this side, same side pants, right? And then go for the lahiva or push him away. So at the same time, I'm pushing the leg, I'm pulling him to me, so you see, again, I'm breaking his posture. It's not only about pushing and letting him posture up. You have to pull. If my opponent starts grabbing my collar here, I'm in danger. If I allow him to do that, he's gonna probably like start giving me a hard time and start passing your guard. So you have to avoid that, all right? So if you grab her here, for example, I have to break and then go back to my grip, under hook, go for K guard, De La Hiva, or whatever guard he wants to play, right? Even like you can go maybe to like an X guard. Okay, uh, now let's say I'm playing reverse lahiva, right? I'm the reverse, what did you say? Reverse lahiva, if I play reverse lahiva and I let my opponent control my collar, so things will be hard for me. I have to break the grip and keep this hand, this arm in the distance. Let's say my opponent control my collar on this side, okay? The same, like the, the bottom side collar, right? He controls your but he can't deal with my legs. He's pretty much dealing with my upper body only because both arms are on this side right here. So now I can start passing my guard. Okay, exactly, right? But because he's holding my collar, he has like attacks. He can go for cross choke, right? He can go for uh, maybe like a loop choke, okay? Or even guillotines if I turn right here, okay? So that's why it's not a good idea letting my opponent control the collar, especially with this hand right here. Because after he grabs with this hand, now he can use the other hand to deal with your legs, right? And then he's gonna start passing your guard. So now I have no arms to push your opponent because he's gonna be really close, 
Once you grab and you put the head closely, you can underhook, right? It's super hard for me to now create distance, okay? Even if I have my foot right here and he's grabbing my collar, right? It still can be dangerous because Rafael can stand up and then take the leg out like this and now he's super close to me, okay? So at the end of the day, any guard that I'm playing, let's say knee shield, put a knee shield guard right here. So I'm doing knee shield. This is a very common situation, especially if I find someone heavier than me. Um, I cannot do knee shield with my opponent controlling my collar as well. Because now Rafael can start pulling my collar towards him. And again, his head's gonna be super close. Now look, I can't push him. So first, I wanna teach you on how to prevent your opponent from getting on your side first, okay? And the best way, to do it is to make sure that you control the outside arm, okay? This is the inside arm, it's the outside arm in this case, okay? Because I'm facing this way. So if I keep the frames here, try to pass my guard as well. Even if he pass my guard, pass my guard, he passed my guard, right? But just because I have his arm in contact with his body right here, and I create this frame right here, it's a little bit harder for him to control me because I'm, I have more freedom here. Okay, I can go away from him, I can use my arm here, I can put my arm on the floor, escape my hips, right? I can just escape the hips as well and bring the bottom leg in and then recover the guard. At the end of the day, <coughs> it's avoiding your opponent from grabbing the collar and hugging your head. If you hug my head right here, I'm in big trouble. I can play guard like that, okay? And what people do when they start training jiu-jitsu, especially the beginners, even like I see black girls doing that, they play guard not too concerned about this arm. And let's say I'm doing guard like this, now my opponent's controlling my collar, now I'm in danger because if, if uh, Rafael passed my guard, like just do a knee catch, Rafael. Like this, for example, like I can try to escape my hips, right? But he always pulling me here, close your elbow. Like he's pulling me here, so it's hard for me to create space or even to push it because it's his weight adding more weight with the pull that he has with his head, right? But now if I break this grip and he has no pull, it's just his weight. But now look, there's no pull. Like he doesn't, uh, he doesn't uh, pull himself against me. So it's a little bit lighter for me. So I can bridge and then create a space to recover the guard. Plus I can move away. But when he's grabbing the collar, it's gonna be super hard for you to escape. Okay? Even if you get this underhook, right? Still, he can grab your head like this. Or if I turtle, he can grab my hand as a guillotine, like this, and then he can give me a hard time here. Yes, I can turtle, escape from side control, but then he's gonna grab my head, okay? So every single guard that you're doing, let's say butterfly guard, right, grab my collar, like if he's grabbing my collar here, he can start passing my guard this side. Or if you grab my collar on this side, he can start passing my guard to that side, okay? So what are the signs that are important for an opponent to control your collar? For example, if I am aiming to pass the guard to this side, I want this collar. It's gonna be better for me because now look, anytime I can keep Raphael really close to me, right? Even if you work with a knee shoe, butterfly, whatever hook he's looking for to do with this leg, I can keep him really close to me. Even if he try to go for kiss of the dragon, for example, I can block him from inverting, right? But if I don't have the grip, now he's, he has more freedom. So at the same time that the person on top is looking for the collar grip, hugging the head right here, or hugging the head like this, or even like that with the D, okay? You have to understand that, right? So I am the one that wants to control, and he is the one that wants to avoid that. Okay, so if you avoid me from controlling his collar, he's gonna create more space, right? And then we'll create space, a recovery, and now do a lasso. Now that don't let me grab your collar, right? It's hard for me to. Now he's managing on not letting me control him, right? But let's say if Rafael control, do the lahiva and control only my legs, Rafael. This leg here and maybe this belt or even, exactly. So now look, let's say if I start passing to this side, I can control the collar like this but I'm not dealing with his legs anymore, okay? Because I don't have arms to deal with his legs. Raphael can go for a shallow lasso here, okay? Because my head uh, placement right here. But if I go more like closer, or even looking for the underhook, now I can block the legs, right? 
But if I pass, for example, the same situation, instead of going this hand, I go with this hand right here. Now look, I can go this way right here. Right? And now it's way harder for Raphael to recover the guard. Try to recover the guard, Raphael. Like, even though like, he's going to try to keep me on the half guard, and then start passing the guard with the long step, or even like as a knee cut. And as I land on the side and go over the guard, see, I'm pulling. Okay, so you have to prevent this. Okay, you cannot let your opponent control your collar or hug your head. Okay? So let's say my opponent can go with the three on the pass and pass my guard, but I cannot push his legs. Okay, go back. And there's a drill that we do here. And I think this is completely wrong. That's my guard standing. And then I go like, to recover over the guard. It's not gonna be like that in the fight. If you do that, you're in trouble because you don't think about the arm. So you pass your guard, grab my collar. Even if I push him, get close to me, he's gonna pull me. And now it's gonna be hard for me to recover the guard, okay? So when someone passes, a Toriano pass on you, so you're, you're aiming to control this hand right here because he wants to grab your collar right now, and then you avoid that, put your weight on me. Even with him putting the weight on me, I push the, leg, the arm away, and then I start skating the hips. Of course, you can recover the guard. Bringing the leg this way, right? Or you can use the frame under the armpit from the top leg, lift your hip up, and then you roll, putting your head between your legs, and then you, you recover the guard like that. That's another way for you to recover. Okay, this is like require a little bit more flexibility. So you understand that you have to avoid your opponent from controlling your collar and um, hugging your head under or over. For example, if I sit up, if I'm fighting with someone and then they grab my collar and I want to pull guard, okay? So if my opponent is grabbing both collars and I pull to open guard, right? It's gonna be hard for me to play guard if I let this happen, right? I can try putting him between my legs, but if you anticipate on knee cutting or passing the guard, it's gonna be hard. For example, even if I break one side, okay? Let's say if I was holding this side, I have to avoid on playing guard facing this way. Because if I face this way, my father's gonna pull me, you see? So if he's grabbing this side, I have to face this way to play guard. Right, I have to face this way here. Okay, because now it's a little bit harder for him to control me. But then Rafael can start moving that way, and now it can be a problem for me. And then he's gonna start knee cut like this, and then start getting me close to him, right? So, the best option for you to pull guard, it's gonna be breaking the grip, control two grips, and then if you pull guard right now, you have to face this way. So you're hiding this collar here. This color here, it's okay, as long as I keep facing this way, right? And I see people making mistakes like that. Sometimes they, the guy grabs the collar like this, and they sit like this. Now if I start passing, uh, he's gonna give, give me a hard time. So it's better to break the grip, and then sit. Now you're gonna start playing guard and start doing your thing, right? So, with that being said, you understand that you don't want to give your head, the control of the collar, the head, uh, to your opponent, okay? So when I'm playing on top, I'm looking for that grip. And when I'm playing on bottom, I'm looking for avoiding that grip, right? So if I'm here, Rafael Bulgar, immediately I start putting, placing myself to this side. It's all wrong going to the other way, but you're gonna have a little bit of harder time to pass this side, because even if you pass, you're not controlling the collar. Move away from me, Rafael. Look, you see? But on this side, I can pull him, and it's harder for him to go away from me. And easily to scoop my arm under while I'm doing my long step and pass his guard. Okay? So, if, you're, if you want to avoid people to get on your side control, when you're, you want to pull guard, right? You want to pull, start playing. Break the grips, right? So now I understand, this is the side I like to play guard, I can pull. But if he's grabbing here, even if I break this, but this is the side I wanna play guard, I cannot pull, 
right? Because I like to face this way. Either I face the other way, right? Pull guard facing this way, or break the grip first, and then you pull guard. You cannot give the collar. Don't let the, the opponent control your, control your collar. If I do a hand fight, right? We're hand fighting here. And I see people like hand fighting like this. Grab my collars, hold the hands on the collars, and then you, you're not dominating your opponent here. You have to break the grip from the collar, right? You have to like break the grip. Or you can grab both sleeves and try to pull up, but sometimes it's hard. If he's moving his arms, it's hard, but at least one, you can. Then you can go arm drag, okay? You can pull guard with the foot, right on the bicep, right? Building frames, 